I don't know if you heard, but monks are awesome and sneaky. Hello again all, this is Eatmo Pie with TGN, and let's learn to play the Brewmaster. That is the Monk Tank Spec. Okay, let me start by saying Brewmasters are absolutely phenomenal. They are fun to play, they have a ton of control over their incoming damage, and they just flow very, very nicely. Now jumping right in, when you spec Brewmaster, you get a few things. Brewmaster Training. What that does is makes your Spear Hand Strike and your Tiger Palm free. It gives you an additional bonus to your oh shit button and your blackout kick now causes shuffle which is a very important buff. Okay let's talk about brewmaster mechanics. Brewmasters can dodge and parry but they do not have a lot of armor. What they have is when they're in their tank stance, the stance of the sturdy ox, they gain a bunch of buffs. Stamina, uh, uncritable, all that stuff. The main thing they gain though is the ability to stagger and what stagger is is you take 70% of the damage from a hit up front and 30% over a 10 second dot and that is where their mitigation comes into play. They have an ability called shuffle that goes on top of their stagger and it increases their parry by 20% and increases their stagger amount by 20%. So while that buff is active you're now taking 50% of the damage up front instead of 70 there's other things. Your Mastery, Elusive Brawler, also increases your amount of stagger. So now you're looking at, at even more damage not taken up front and, uh, and taken over on the, uh, the dot side. The cool thing about it is you have an ability called Purifying Brew. And what it does is allows you to completely eliminate your stagger debuff. All 10 seconds of it. It costs one chi and it has a one second cooldown you can use it as often as needed and you can control your incoming damage better than any other class in the game hands down okay the next thing you need to know about is elusive brew and the way that it works is every time you crit with an auto attack you gain a stack and you can use use these stacks each one is worth one second and you gain thirty percent dodge for as many seconds as you had stacks and that is a one second cooldown so you can keep this up as often as you have stacks another defensive ability you have is guard it costs two chi it has a thirty second cooldown and it lasts thirty seconds it basically is your power word shield uh... your priest bubble and just one more thing to uh... to mitigate okay now that you have an idea of the brewmaster mitigation mechanics let's talk about some of the skills Keg Smash, this is your main attack, it's an 8 second cooldown, it's a cleave, and it does a ton of damage. It also puts two debuffs on the target, Dizzying Haze and Weakened Blows. Okay, another signature ability for the Brewmaster is your Breath of Fire. Now, it doesn't do very much damage on its own, but if your target has Dizzying Haze on it, then it will ignite them and it will be your highest damaging attack overall. Another offensive ability we need to talk about is Tiger Palm because it does a few different things. First of all, it's a filler and it doesn't cost any energy. The second thing it does is it gives you a 15% armor penetration buff. The next thing it does is it gives you a 15% bonus to your next guard. Okay, AoE Threat. It is not really an issue with Brewmasters at all. Threat isn't an issue at all, but uh, you can see this is Dizzying Haze. It generates a high amount of threat and it puts your Dizzying Haze debuff on, which reduces the speed by 50% and gives you the ability to ignite them with your Breath of Fire. Uh, very useful tool, especially for AoE pulls or picking up adds that you can't hit that are outside of melee range. Okay, Black Ox Statue. This is a 3 minute cooldown and this is one of the most forgotten abilities that the Brewmaster has. Uh, what it does is you can place your statue anywhere and once you do a certain amount of damage it'll start putting your guard on random injured raid and party members uh, you know absorbing sixty thousand damage also if you target it and use your taunt it'll aoe taunt anything within eight yards very useful for raids okay let's talk expel harm expel harm is your self heal and it's not very big but once you have vengeance it is increased and it is just a nice little help it generates one chi it costs forty energy and it's a fifteen second cooldown so that's about it for your main 
rotational abilities. What you want to practice is keeping your shuffle buff up as much as possible, keeping your guard up as much as possible, and, and just maintaining your energy and chi balance as you go through your damaging rotation. As you can see, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting some Breath of Fires. Uh, you want to try and keep that dot on any target that you are able to put it on uh, because, like I said, it does a ton of damage. Um, and, and just practice. It, it really is a balance of feeling the flow and getting used to it. Uh, you can use a two-hander if that's more comfortable. I prefer dual wielding. It seems like I get more elusive brew stacks with dual wielding, uh, but that's not proven yet. We need some more theory crafting on that. Okay, let's talk about some of your oh shit buttons. Uh, first of all, you have Fortifying Brew, and that turns your skin to stone, increasing your health by 20%, increases your stagger by 20%, and reduces damage taken by 20% last 20 seconds. Uh, your, your standard oh shit button, 3 minute cooldown. The next one is a raid cooldown. It's called Avert Harm. It's a 1 minute cooldown. It reduces all damage taken by your party, by nearby party members, by 50%, and causes it to redirect to you. It lasts 10, 15 seconds, and if you, you drop below 10% health, it's canceled, which I haven't had happen yet. The next thing is Zen Meditation. It's a 3-minute cooldown, and it reduces all damage taken by 90%, and it redirects 5 harmful spells to you from anyone within 30 yards. The only thing is it's canceled with melee attack, so if you are hit with a melee attack, that's it. It ends the channel. Okay, let's do a little recap. Chi generating abilities. Keg Smash. Use it on cooldown. It generates two Chi. It hits really hard, and it's a cleave. Jab. If you're at full HP, Jab does more damage than Expel Harm. Both of them generate one Chi. Filler abilities. Tiger Palm. If it's single target or if you need the buffs refreshed. Spinning Crane Kick for three plus targets. Okay, one final recap before we get to PvE content. General priorities, blackout kick, rushing jade wind to keep your shuffle buff up as often as you can. Watch your stagger debuffs, use your purifying brew, try not to use it until after you are hit and you have a refreshed buff. Use guard as needed and just be a good meat shield. I can't teach you how to tank, you just have to practice, get the feel of it, and work on taking as little damage as you can. Okay, heroic siege of Nirzu temple, this is the first boss. Vizier Jin back and he has a heavy melee fight and that's why I wanted to show this so we start out we throw our black ox statue down you can see there's a jade serpent I have a mist weaver healer here and uh, your first priority build chi use your keg smash get your shuffle buff up as fast as you can now because he's heavy melee I try to get my guard up next because I don't want to take any huge spike damage and, and catch my healer off guard and end up you know scaring him and just try and keep an eye on when I'm using my purifying brew. How you know, look at my buffs and see that I'm trying to keep them all up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it really is a just it's a rinse and repeat type rotation. You want to keep your shuffle up. You want to try and keep your guard up as often as you need it. You want to make sure you clear your stacks of staggering, uh, of stagger. And uh, yeah, that that is really about it. Now you see here in a second, I get a little bit low. And it's because I'm not getting my little healing orbs. They're spawning to the sides, and uh, you know all I needed to do was pick up a few of those, and I'm I'm right back up to uh, to max health or close to it. So it's not really anything I'm doing poorly, uh, but it's it's just kind of one of the mechanics because he does hit hard. This boss, you know, they they buffed heroics substantially. So you see here, my DPS is kind of failing on this mechanic. You're supposed to kill the globs, and then the detonation will not be as significant. Although it's not that bad right now, because I use my avert harm. This is one of those times where you, you help the healer out, and uh, you reduce the damage everybody else takes, and you, you eat it. So that's it for this boss. Not too difficult. And you see I finish him with my touch of death, which I have glyphed. And the reason is, I never have enough chi as on my brewmaster left to use my touch of death and I really don't ever need it except for on boss fights so yeah that that's my theory on that so here's what an AoE pool looks like you start out with your dizzying haze and uh, your breath of fire these are immune to my glyph my my disorient with my breath of fire but no big deal I can still stun them and uh, spinning crane kick you want to keep your shuffle up as much as you can this is a good place to use your uh, rushing jade wind if you, you're using that 
And, um, yeah, that's really about it. General Pavlak. He is one of the last bosses in here. Another melee heavy fight. And, uh, he spawns a ton of adds that you need to pick up and tank and destroy. You start this fight like any other boss fight. You drop your statue of the Black Ox. And, uh... You start out generating chi, you get your shuffle buff up as fast as you can. You keep an eye on your, your stagger debuff. You try and use your guard. And uh, you just stay alive. You get all your, your buffs and debuffs up and you stay alive. And uh, just do your best to be a good meat shield. Again, it's really hard for me to explain exactly what to do in every situation. It, it's actually not possible. You just have to play. You have to get a feel for it. You, you get into the flow and... You, you, you become the tank. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but um, it really is all about practice, and it, it's very situational. You know, for instance, magic heavy fights, you want to open up with a guard rather than a, a blackout kick for your shuffle. You still want to end up having both of those up, but it, it's not. Uh, it, it's more important to have guard than shuffle because sh your, your stagger isn't going to do anything for magic damage. So you can see this fight gets a little bit crazy. When he puts his shield up, all the adds come. And he does drop bombs that you can pick up and throw, and it AoEs the adds. It blows his shield up, I believe. But uh, nobody's actually doing that. We're kind of doing this raw dog. So, yeah. I'm not sure if this is lag or server issues or just my bad aim, but I miss a bunch here with my dizzying haze. I do it twice, and um, you know you just pick them up with your spinning crane kick if you have to. It, it is a high generator of threat. See, I'm failing trying to use the uh, the bombs because nobody else is doing it, and uh, I miss a bunch of ads here too. Not a big deal. Nobody dies. It's it's just a five-man heroic, and these uh, these ads don't hit that hard anyway. But if you can avoid doing that and have DPS that understand how the bombs work, that is a bonus. Overall, this is a pretty easy fight, a fairly easy instance, especially because we overgear it so much. And uh, they did buff heroics. It is possible to wipe, but not with this group. We got a pretty decent group, even though our DPS is a little bit low. And that is it for Learn to Play a Brewmaster. Hopefully you have learned something. Hopefully you feel more informed and have a better understanding of the Brewmaster spec, the Monk class, and just how amazing they are. Thank you for watching. This is Eat Mo Pie. And we'll see ya. And we'll see ya. This video is part of the Way Movement. Learn more at TGN.TV.